Stocks, midfielder Billy Ward, midfielder George Evans, and attackman Kevin Wright. We'll start with a statement from Coach and then open it up for questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. Well, it didn't feel like a 15 to 9 game today, but uh, uh, it was great to see the crowd here in Geneva. I thought uh, Hobart was a team that came out uh, fired up and ready to play, and uh, they had the crowd behind them. And I, Hats off to their coaching staff. I thought they did a really good job, and their players uh, came to play today. Fortunately, we came out in the second half, and uh, we were able to get some more possessions. And I think we calmed down offensively, and especially in the fourth quarter, we were able to score some goals and, and put some distance between us and, and the statesmen. So it was a good win for us, and, a, and again, I think a great game and, a, and a great for the crowd. Good to see it here in Geneva today. So. Congrats to Hobart, and I'm proud of our guys for playing so well, especially in the second half today. So coming off a Carolina game, and uh, the emotion of this game was was big, and it's great to have the Kraus Simmons Trophy back home in Syracuse. Questions for Syracuse? Billy, was there any any talk when, you know, I looked down at the score, and I'm sure you guys aren't thinking of this on the field, but with like 11 minutes to play, it's 11 to 8, and I'm thinking, hmm, it's 11 to 8 with 11 minutes to play last year. And you ended up losing the game to them. Was there any talk among the players to finish the game, finish the game out there today in the fourth? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that was one of the big points we talked on towards the end was, you know, it's not over till it's over. Um, I know last year they scored a couple goals in the last couple minutes. Um, and the big thing we talked about in the huddle is, like, let's finish this. Uh, let's do what we have to do and keep, you know, pressing like we've been pressing in the second half. Uh, for Randy and Kevin, you guys both obviously had great days. Uh, what were you seeing in the defense that allowed you guys to you know, score a lot of goals today? Um, well, you know, initially we weren't playing too well because um, you know they were pressing out behind on us and, and we weren't able to, to get the ball you know where we usually do. And, and I think we just sort of settled down and, and let the offense work. And you know our middies do you know a great job drawing slides and, and making the defense rotate. And uh, we got some goals off of that. And you know, I thought we rode pretty well today, and I know we got a couple goals off of that, and then, uh, you know, man up was, was pretty good, too. I thought uh, we started off slow, like Kevin said. Um, we are just forcing the ball a little too much there, and we calmed down a lot, and like, like he said, like the middies were um, dodging in the backside was there, and we just happened to find each other. Um, yeah, I think it was a well-round um, offensive team win. Can you walk us through the play that you threw to Dylan down the inch at the end of the quarter? That's was pretty wild. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I got the ball there, and um, uh, I knew there was, there was like 30 seconds left, and I seen Dylan um, just standing there wide open, and I was just <laughs> falling back. I just threw up a prayer, and it got to him. So. Looks a lot harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, did you ever seen anything like that before? Do you think anything off the top of your head? I've seen Randy do some pretty spectacular things in practice, so it didn't uh, didn't surprise me one bit when he did something like that. Billy, uh, yourself with the winning goal last week, and now uh, you know a goal in the fourth quarter today. And can you just talk about how your uh, midfield unit with Nikki and uh, Derek Maltz has come together, and that unit has kind of meshed well and you know, played well together? Yeah, I think our unit's been playing pretty well. I, I mean, Nikki and and Derek are so easy to play with. Um, I mean, they both got their heads up, and we've been playing, you know, I've been playing with Derek since we came in freshman year, and Nikki's really coming and gelled well. Um, so it, it's really easy to play with, and, and you know, it's, we kind of joke around, we got six, six attackmen out there when we're in there, and you know, everyone's a you know, smart lacrosse player, and with these guys out there, it, it makes it really easy to kind of get in the flow of things and keep things going. Coach, Coach obviously too much depth is a good thing, but with the way that second line midfield played against the end of UNC, and you even said that how you keep your first line midfield at the end of that game, how do you balance those two lines going forward with the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament going on? Well, I think that uh, balance is the key. I think that uh, we've played against teams like Carolina where we have to, and we need to get these guys in. Even against Carolina, we were playing them, playing them in a little shorter week. Uh, so we had other guys in, you know, Jordan Evans and a couple other guys to you know, just give, us, give our starters a rest. So they've been playing well, and I don't, I'm not so sure we call one our first line or second line right now. Uh, call them orange and blue, whatever you want to call them, but uh, they're playing great at the right time of year. Randy, can you talk about your confidence where it is right now? You know, 10 goals now on the road in the last two road games. Just where you've come since the start of the year, you missed a couple of games, where you are now. Do you even, do you even envision the role you're going on right now? Um, I mean, I'm just fortunate. Like, my teammates find me open, and I'm just lucky enough to be in the right spot at the right time, you know. Um, 
but I, get, I owe it to them more than anything because they're the one feeding me the ball um, in the right spot. So um, it's not really confident. I think we're just playing well together, and um, we've got to continue that. I give their goalie a lot of credit uh, for how he played, especially in the first half. And fortunately, Randy was able to find the back of the net, I think, four times in the first half to keep us, uh, keep us in it. Uh, I think we went in with a one-goal yeah. deficit at halftime, and that was huge for us. John, there was one point where Randy and Kevin had all nine of your goals. I think you're up nine, 98 or it was close. So that you were hanging in there. You win with two guys pretty much carrying the whole scoring load. And then in the last quarter, then a couple guys chipped in. How important was it to eventually get a little guy involved? Or do you think it needed to Randy and Kevin could have just kept scoring enough to win the game? <laughs> uh, well, if he kept getting open, then it, it probably would have. He was shooting uh, really well. Uh, you know, I think finally in the second half, you know, we got into some flow, especially the fourth quarter. Uh, we, we didn't have a lot of possessions. I thought Hobart did a great job once they were on offense. I, I looked up at the, uh, I think it was the third quarter. They had the ball. They won the first faceoff to start the third quarter, and they scored with about 11.45. So they'd had the ball uh, for, what, three minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, so they did a good job keeping away, for, away from us. Um, and again, uh, the, goal, the way he was playing, it was great that these guys found the back of the net for us. It was huge. Kevin, most of your offense this year, you know, uncharacteristic for historically for a Syracuse team has come in settled. Uh, today, I think you had a, at least a handful of goals and unsettled in transition. Just did you go into it thinking maybe we could generate some transition against these guys? That's a young, young Hobart team out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked this week about riding hard. You know, we thought we could, you know, cause a few turnovers and. You know, I think uh, our middies especially did a good job bumping at the midfield line and, you know, we were fortunate enough to cause some delay of game penalties and, um, you know, a couple just pure turnovers off the ride and I think we got a couple goals that way, especially early on when we were struggling in the settled situation. And, you know, those are the easy ones that, you know, get you rolling when you are six on six. Any questions for Jordan? Yeah, Jordan, uh, you know, you got your first uh, extended minutes a little bit today. Uh, if you could just assess your overall play and how it felt <coughs> there. Uh, it's on the defensive video there? Yeah, it's definitely something new. Um, but I think uh, in practice, I've been getting a lot of runs um, on D-Midi, and it's been helping me out. Um, Jenkins and uh, Grimm um, have both been helping me with the talk and um, telling me where I need to be and kind of taking me under their wing. Um, so I got a lot of experience this week, um, and it was good to have it translate into the game. Um, I mean, I thought I was out of position a couple times, but uh, that'll, that'll come with more time. Um, did you like it? I mean, did it feel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot different than offense. Um, it's better than sitting next to me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it's it's good. It's good to be out on the field. It doesn't. I, at this point, I don't. I don't care where I'm at as long as I'm out there helping. Um, I think I can definitely help in transition, um, stuff like that. So wherever I can help. Jordan and Randy, you guys never experienced this rivalry before. What'd you make of it? Oh, I thought the crowd was, uh, the crowd the crowd was pretty, pretty cool experience to be a part of, and uh, um, this whole. The Krause Simmon um, trophy, like I never really been a part of it, like you said, and like coming here this week and hearing coach talk about it and hearing uh, like the players talk about it, it means a lot to to like these two these two clubs. And I don't know, I think it's a, it was an awesome experience today, and I'm was I'm glad to be a part of it. Randy, same question. Did did you get a sense that you and Kevin could needed to score enough to score a hole by myself, or um, did we did we sigh relief and finally you know? I don't really think we don't really think like that. I guess whoever whoever is really open at the time, and we just try to stay within our offense and create offense with the the whole team, not just me and Kevin. You know, I, we got six guys out there. We got to use all six of them. So there was a sigh of relief when you see the other guys stepping up, and not that you wouldn't be glad to score, but you know, John talked about balancing the team. Um, no, not, not really. We were just all pumped up, ready ready to get get the win, and I think we did that. Um, as a team, and um, everyone everyone played well, I thought. Kevin, yeah. I noticed a bunch of times you and Dylan got it somehow <coughs> a shorty at X, and I know what you're going to do when you get a shorty at X. But I mean, was that, were they playing a zone at the time, and that guy got caught back there, or, or was it a switch? Um, well, you know, they were uh, extending out at X so far, so, um, you know, we, t we each took turns going up to the top part of our offense, and. You know, they slide from the crease really early, which makes it sort of a zone on the backside. So, you know, we were able to switch up our matchups a little bit. And as soon as we got a shorty, you know, we take them behind and dodge them right away. 
There's such a, a quick sliding defense, they're, they're a crease sliding defense that comes very quickly, so you're not going to get a lot of goals off of dodges. And I think, like Mike pointed out, I think we had uh, 12 of our 15 goals were assisted. So that's what you saw, them sliding early and, and us at times being good enough to get the ball to the open man and to the backside. Coach, you said uh, it was better uh, having Jordan on the field instead of uh, standing there next to you. If you could just assess how he played. I thought he played very well. He's been playing well in practice. One of the goals I think it was in the first half we got was transition from him. He got it and ran the field, and we scored a fast break off of it. And uh, we haven't been getting a ton of those this year. So and he's a very smart player, and he's done very well in practice. So now if, if he's a very good defensive player and an offensive player. And uh, he was playing very well also early in the year, uh, but he had the injury. He was out for two or three weeks. And the other guys got healthy between Nick and Randy, and it's just been harder getting them back in there. And we thought, we got such a, a quality player here. Let, let's get him in here somehow. And he's smart. He's good in the package. He's picked things up really quickly there. For, for, Billy, and, for, for Billy and Coach, um, face-offs were dead even going into the fourth, and then Chris wins five to six. You know, how big was he today, again, for you guys? Go ahead. I mean, Chris has been, you know, I mean, you guys have been seeing it. He's been playing so well. I think, you know, starting with the Notre Dame game and on, and he's been working working his tail off this whole year, him and Coach Donahue. So, you know, I think we're all real proud of him, and, and I know it's it's really good to see him start to play well. I mean, he was always so close, and just a matter of getting a couple ground balls here and there, and he's starting to get those ground balls. He's really doing an awesome job, and I think he's a big key to this run we're on right now. So, you know, with Chris, you know, we kind of go with him. So he's been doing a great job, and, you know, we're all behind him, and they've been working really hard, so it's it's good to see. Well, I think it was a difference uh, in, in enabling us to, to go ahead, you know, to, to pull pull away. Uh, he had done, uh, you know, such a good job in previous games, and they Hobart had done such a good job controlling the ball at their offensive end of the field. That we just needed it, and we were a little rushed in the first half. Uh, had some turnovers at the offensive end, and then it allowed us to have those possessions settle down offensively and put a lot of pressure on the Hobart defense. Last one for Dave. Man down unit. Yeah, so defense in general and, and the and the man down and it's a fifth straight game you've allowed ten or fewer after the twenty one goal to Duke and several times they could have tied the score, you know, yeah. in the EMO and they went one for six. Yeah. I think uh, all if you look at our season maybe since the halfway point, uh, everything's improved and we were able to get on a full field, you know, I was belly aching early in the year that uh, you know, we couldn't get on 110 yards, and you know, we're playing the likes of you know Maryland and Virginia early, and then uh, finally the weather broke, the basketball season ended, and we had you know 110 yards in, in the dome and outside on our practice field, and we were able to work on the things to uh, you know improve in those facets of the game. And a lot of it is also coming from defense to doing it to offense and offense to defense. And I think we were able to improve on that, and, and Duke was a. Uh, you know, they kicked us in the pants, and it was an eye-opener, and our guys really pulled together at, at that point. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.